Hey guys, Britt here. Welcome to End Times Bible Prophecy. Make sure to hit the subscribe, like, and share buttons. Well, it's happening already. What am I talking about? Well, I'm talking about this George Orwell 1984-like social credit system that's been in place in China for several years now, but we're seeing it opening up in the West now and taking hold. And the latest iteration of that is this right here talking about this article from Zero Hedge about Nigel Farage who is known as uh, the chief political leader behind the UK Brexit movement if you remember that back in 2016 there was a referendum in the United Kingdom on whether or not the UK should leave the European Union and they voted yes and Nigel was seen as the leader of that movement. He has since retired from politics and gone into media and television. It, well, at least retired as a politician. He's still involved in politics. But let's see what's happening to him now. The title of this says, Life in the UK is becoming completely unlivable. Brexiteer Farage is being systematically unbanked. It says, despite winning News Presenter of the Year award, Nigel Farage has mixed feelings this week. In the following clip, he reveals his concern about a recent development that may significantly impact his future career and even his ability to live in the United Kingdom. It says, the Brexit provocateur shares his experience of having his bank accounts abruptly closed by a major banking group without a valid reason provided. And if you watch this video, and I'm gonna put a link to the video from him uh, in the comments, I'll pin it at the top of the comments, I'll also put it in the description, but this is a banking group he's been with since 1980, so many, many years. He says, worse still, he discloses his attempts to open new accounts with several other banks all of which have been unsuccessful so far. Farage speculates on three possible reasons for his inability to secure a bank account. One, the EU's definition of a politically exposed person, or PEP. Two, prejudice from corporate institutions. And three, false allegations made by a member of parliament regarding funds from the Russian government. If they can do it to him, do you have any doubt you are at risk it says watch the full address below and it points to his Twitter account and again I'll link to this in the comments in the description I want you to go watch his video yourself he says the establishment are trying to force me out of the UK by closing my bank accounts I've been given no explanation or recourse as to why this is happening to me this is serious political persecution at the very highest level of our system. If they can do it to me, they can do it to you too. And guys, make no doubt about it. If a high profile figure like Nigel Farage can have this happen to him, then you and I don't stand a chance. And this is the pathway that they're going down now. If we do not stand up, in support of him and others like him, then all freedom, all hope is lost. And if you have any doubt, let's see, this isn't the first time that something like this has happened. Let's look at this right here. If you remember, this is from September 2021. It says, Chase Bank apologizes for Michael Flynn credit card cancellation letter sent in, quote, error. It says, Ch Chase Bank apologized to the household of former White, ha White House National Security Advisor and retired Lieutenant General Michael Flynn on Tuesday for a credit card cancellation letter sent to the Flynn family. The letter sent August 20th read, we decided to close your credit cards on September 18th, 2021, because continuing the relationship creates possible reputational risk with our company. Guys, make no doubt, pressure is being applied on these corporations by the government, by political opponents, 
to persecute these individuals who were linked to administrations or political groups that the people in power do not like, the people who are trying to put us under this type of system. Think, th think that again, like, oh, no, you're, you're being over the top. Let's not forget what happened in February 2022. If you remember this article, Canada says it will freeze the bank accounts of Freedom Convoy truckers who continue their anti-mandate blockades. Guys, and they did exactly that. You had a peaceful protest. Thousands and thousands of people gathered peacefully protesting. You can go back, you can watch the videos of people handing out food, having tailgates, simply peacefully protesting, expressing their God-given rights. And they were brutally, you know, kept from that happening. You had police on horseback coming and stomping protesters, and you had the bank accounts of those protesters cut off, shut down. They were ostracized from society. And now we have this happening to one of the leading political figures in the United Kingdom to the point where he cannot open a bank account. And let me tell you, try to operate without a bank account in modern society. You're going to either be living in poverty, abject poverty, or, or homelessness. It is near impossible to operate if all of the banking system decides that you can't be a part of it. So guys, this is something we need to stand up to right now because if not, freedom is lost forever. Again, let's look at this article recently or earlier in June from Zero Hedge. It says, Bank of International Settlements to use artificial intelligence to monitor global bank transactions for, quote, money laundering. And we've been over this before of how they're going to use this pretext of money laundering. Oh, all this criminal activity is taking place, and that's why we need further control over the banking system. This is why we need to know what transactions people are making. But again, if Nigel Farage, if he was engaged in criminal activity, then he needs to be properly charged. He needs to have his day in court. And if he's found guilty, then he goes to jail where he doesn't need a bank account. But none of that has happened. They have simply decided to cut him off. And they can claim, well, it, it's these rules, these, these laws. They aren't singling him out. It's these laws because he's a politically exposed person under this definition. But if that's true, where are the other political leaders on the other side of the aisle, people who are political opponents of him who are experiencing the same problem, they don't exist. That's not happening. Those things aren't happening to the establishment, to the people who want to implement this system. None of those politicians are having this happen to them. Well, let's go on and read more about this. This says, while the IMF is currently gearing up to introduce its new global central bank digital currency system called the UMU, also known as the Unicoin, the Bank for International Settlements has been busy with multiple projects designed to centralize all international banks and central banks into a single umbrella network that allows for quick cross-border transactions using digital currencies. In other words, a cashless society. One such concept called Project Icebreaker, we've talked about this in the past, dealt specifically with creating a swift light bottleneck system, which would allow global banks to regulate and eventually homogenize all currencies into a single one world exchange model that would give them the power to cut out any nation or company, and I'll add individual, that does not meet their ideological approval. So guys, we talked about this some time ago, maybe five or six weeks ago, we went through Project Icebreaker, what it involves. And what they're trying to do is all of these different central banks at all the nations around the world are rolling out their own central bank digital currencies. Some are out in the field operational right now. Some are in pilot programs. Some they claim are in research. 
but it covers almost the entire world that's involved in this. Almost the entire world's population is subject to this. And each of, in order to facilitate cross-border payments in different currencies and make that happen instantaneously, they go, well, we're gonna, we're gonna set up a global standard under the Bank of International Settlements so that all of these currencies are subject to our rules and our regulations and our system. And of course, it'll make it so convenient because you can travel from one country to another, make these purchases seamlessly. It'll happen instantaneously, conversion into new currencies instantaneously. But what they don't tell you is that centralizes all control over those transactions with the Bank of International Settlements, meaning one global authority would have the ability to oversee these central bank digital currencies. And of course, it sets up the model and the standard for that. And these central bank digital currencies are programmable, meaning they can put limits on those currencies. They can target your specific currency and make it so that you can't spend it in a certain place or you can't spend it on certain things or you simply can't spend it at all. And they'll have one global ledger that keeps an account of all the property everyone on earth owns. All of the financial transactions that are ever made. And they would be able to simply cut you off from that system, which cuts you off from society. Just as we're seeing happen right now in the UK. Now, why is this relevant? Hopefully you know why. This is relevant because we read here in Revelation 13, verses 16 through 17, it says he, meaning the Antichrist, the false prophet on his behalf, says he required everyone, small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to be given a mark on the right hand or on the forehead, and no one could buy or sell anything without that mark, which was either the name of the beast or the number representing his name. So this mark of the beast system that the Bible says will come in the end times, in the tribulation period right before Christ returns to earth, will give the Antichrist and his global government the ability to control every financial transaction on the planet and the ability to determine who can buy and who can sell. And have no doubt about it, we're seeing that system being put in place right now. Now, we don't see the mark of the beast. The mark of the beast will not come until the midpoint of the tribulation period. And we are not in the tribulation right now. Hopefully, you know, I believe we will be gone. If you're a Christian, if you're a believer in Jesus Christ, the rapture of the church will occur before the tribulation. So, I don't believe I'm going to be here to see the mark of the beast. Hopefully you won't either. But guys, as we approach that time, and Jesus and the prophets said there were many signs to look for as we approach that time, we see the nation of Israel, the Jewish people back in the land of Israel. We see the Jewish people back in control of the city of Jerusalem. We see the gospel being preached all over the earth. We see the Gog of Magog alliance forming. We see the European Union, which closely resembles the final empire that was described in Daniel chapter 2. We see all these different things, all these signs that Jesus said, when you see all these signs, he says, when you see the convergence of these signs, when you see all these things begin to take place, look up, your salvation draws near. We're seeing those things take place which indicates we're nearing that time of tribulation. And we would expect that if we are nearing that time, that we would see this mark of the beast system being put in place. Because, guys, it's not just going to appear out of thin air. The infrastructure has to be put in place first. And have no doubt about it, we're seeing that now. We're seeing that infrastructure. We went over bef uh, maybe a week ago talking about Aldi and how you can't enter some of their stores unless you download an app on your smartphone, unless you allow them to track you through their store. 
we've seen different stores that are doing palm print payment systems and people being accepting of these things. We're seeing many venues say they will not take cash anymore. So we're seeing this assault on using cash, governments putting limits on how much cash can be deposited or withdrawn from a bank account. And we're seeing things like this. We're seeing the government put pressure on banks to cut off certain individuals, whether they be protesters in Canada, politicians in the UK, members of a political administration in the United States, no one is immune from this. They're putting this system into place. So we are seeing the very platform, the system being put in place and actually being used in the way that the Bible tells us the mark of the beast system will be used to cut off and have power and control over who can buy and sell. Because that's what they're doing right here with Nigel Farage. Is if he has no bank account and no bank will allow him to open a bank account, how's he supposed to carry on his daily life, his daily activities as a member of society in the United Kingdom without that? So if you live in the United Kingdom, you need to be out in the streets and protest because if this is allowed to happen and he has to flee the UK because he can't open a bank account and he can't live there, well, what message does that send to anyone who has the same political beliefs he does? It tells them, if I stand up and make my voice heard, the same thing's going to happen to me. And even if you're out there thinking, well, that's precisely why I won't go out in the street and stand up and let my voice be heard, because I don't want that to happen to me. Well, they'll come for you one day. It may not be tomorrow. But your time is coming. You're, you are going to be subject to this. If you let it happen, you will be subject to this one way or another. And eventually, of course, the Bible tells us that this is going to be the case globally. So guys, we're seeing all this being put into place. I know it sounds like bad news. It's terrible to hear of this type of thing happen and to look at nations that used to champion freedom and liberty oppressing political dissent, taking people down, trying to ruin their lives. I know that sounds like bad news, but the good news is that, guys, this is all an indication. Jesus said, remember his words, Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 21, he said, when you see these things begin to happen, look up, your salvation draws near, meaning this was in response to his followers saying, well, when is the time of your coming? When will you come and establish your kingdom at the end of the tribulation period? And he said to look for certain signs. And guys, we're seeing those signs today. Now, I don't know when the tribulation takes place or when Jesus is coming back, but I can tell you this, we need to be living every moment so if he could come back at any moment, and we need to be doing the things Jesus put us here to do. We should be standing for righteousness. We should be telling people the good news of the Lord Jesus Christ that while we were still sinners, he came and he died for us on the cross, spilled his blood so that we could be reconciled with God and have eternal life. That is open to anyone. It is a free gift to anyone. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Guys, Jesus is the way. He's God's gift to humanity, and that is the great news, news that can't be taken away by anything any government does, any tyrannical authority tries to do to us. There's nothing they can do to take away your relationship with Jesus, so hold tight to that. Stay in the Word. Study the Bible. Stand up for what is right and true in these tough times, because tougher times are coming for us and for the world, even after we're gone. But guys, the good news is that Jesus is coming back and he will reign supreme. There's no better news than that. So let me know what you think of all of this. Leave your comments below. I've seen on Yahoo, they had a piece of commentary. I think it was from the UK Independent 
somebody said, well, banks are allowed to do whatever they want. And if they don't want to serve him, so be it. <laughs> I hope that person who wrote that is ready to be a slave. I wonder if they'll have the same opinion when the same thing happens to them. Because it's coming. And so, you know, leave your comments below. Maybe you feel that way. Maybe you feel, well, this is, he's got it coming because we just don't like him. Well, again, <laughs> if the government can do that to him, then you and I don't stand a chance. So we need to stand up for other people now. Even if you don't like that person, you need to stand up for their rights and freedoms because it's all of our rights and freedoms that are in limbo here, in jeopardy here. So leave your comments below. Let me know what you think. Make sure to hit the like, share, and subscribe buttons. When you do that, more and more people hear these videos and they hear the good news of Jesus Christ. So leave your comments below and God willing, I will see you on Wednesday. Bye. If you want to learn more about the end times and Bible prophecy, make sure to sign up for my free monthly newsletter and get your copy of my free ebook, Seven Signs of the End Times. Just follow the link in the description to get your free book. Also, make sure to check out all of my books. Just look up Brit Gillette on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Apple iBooks, Google Books, Kobo, or anywhere books are sold. Thanks for watching today, and until next time, keep your eyes fixed on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith.